Alright, what's up Homestead homies? It's off here with Doug and Stacy, and I'm Doug. And I'm wearing my brown flannel shirt. If you're new to our channel, you might not get that joke. But the people that hang around a lot, we call them Homestead homies, and they're going to get it. So today we're going to bring up a few of the problems that we're having with our compost pile. If you're new to our channel, we live off grid in, the lo in a log cabin in the Midwest, and we basically uh, do the humanure compost. And we use a composting toilet. It's a five gallon bucket with sawdust. I'll leave a video right there where me and my wife, we talk about it. Uh, we were skeptical at first. We did a lot of homework, and then we dove right in. And it's been seven years that we've been using this system, and it works great, okay? This is the system that I put in place seven years ago when we first started with some pallets and some T-posts super low budget super easy to do anybody could do it and I'm not knocking it because it worked very well for us for seven years but because we've been here seven years we've been able to save up think about what we wanted to do as far as an end product goes and then put it all together and upgrade our composting bin so in this video I hope you get some ideas um, ways you can build a compost bin that'll be almost uh, self-sufficient even a compost bin can be self-sufficient and I'm gonna explain to you a few of the problems that we were having right off the bat so a couple of the problems that we were having was water and straw now I'm not trying to build the lazy man's homestead but you know every time you clean out these buckets you have to go fetch water and straw so it gets a little tiresome so what we want to do in our new system our new compost system system our new compost bin is incorporate ways where we can have these things on hand you know one of the things we talk about here on our homestead okay anything whatever it is that has multiple uses so right now those pallets <clears throat> only serve the purpose of composting so we're gonna work uh, a little design into the new system and we're gonna fix a couple of these problems now another problem that we have with our composting system that we're using now is the buckets when we would fill up the buckets and you can have as many buckets as you want number one number two toilet paper everything goes in the bucket and then you put the sawdust on top of it here's another video talking about our composting system way back in the day when we first started doing YouTube so we would bring the buckets outside and set them on the ground like you can see right here and then what happens is like you know it's winter now you wouldn't believe it by the way i'm dressed but it is winter now and what happens is the ground freezes then it thaws so the bottom of the buckets get kind of muddy okay so that's problem number one with the buckets problem number two with the buckets is once i have them cleaned and they're nice and pretty and they smell great then I don't have anywhere to put them. So we leave them on the ground, or I've been putting them on top of the chicken wire on the bin that's already been composted. And you know, it's just not very organized. I really don't care for it. And then because we leave them standing up, um, then what happens is the rain comes, it gets inside the buckets. So when you need a bucket, you always have like this wet bucket, which is not a big deal, but it just kind of absorbs into the sawdust or you gotta wipe it out. So basically we're just creating more work. Another problem that we have with the pallets uh, for the compost bins is when you're handling the buckets, they're kind of heavy. So you have to get them up and over the pallets and then into the pile. So when you start a fresh new pile, it's a little difficult because of the way you have to lift it up and in and you don't want to have that stuff splashing all over the place <laughs> all right so in uh, our new design what we're going to do is address these issues and again we're going to make our um, composting center much more functional so hopefully you guys enjoy this video hopefully you guys are taking notes so if you guys start doing this you'll be able to skip some of these mistakes that we made but if this is all you can do at the time it's better to do that than to do nothing at all and believe me even our composting center is saving us bazillions of dollars uh, more uh, than if we were to put in septic or any other kind of a thing or even just to connect to the city so this is a great way to take care of um, your business and it gives back you can use this on your garden you can use this on your plants on your shrubs on your trees if you're paranoid about it if you're not really sure you can still do it and then just put it on trees and shrubs things that aren't edible and it's a great super good fertilizer so do your homework don't believe anything that i say but i'm telling you guys we've seen it for seven years and we we have seen things that we've used it with flourish and grow okay so now we're going to get on with this build and let's see how it turns out first things that we did is we put our posts in okay we, we spaced these posts out from end to end if that makes sense at five feet now you can make your compost pile 
as big as you want. Uh, but we've been using the pallets and that works really good for the two of us plus our guests. Um, that is enough space for one year's worth of composting. So if you have a larger family, you might want to increase your area just a little bit more, maybe six by six, okay? And then that way you can get one year's worth of composting in uh, to your designated area because the idea behind this composting is, is you, you put everything in here for one year and I'm talking about everything. The number ones, the number twos, and the toilet papers everything goes in the bucket covered with sawdust if you can smell uh, what's going on in that bucket then that means you haven't added enough cover material basically in this video video I'm gonna brush over some of these things too that we get questions about so we use sawdust now when you get your sawdust as Stacy mentioned in a previous video um, you have to have dry sawdust so you want to get it in an environment we keep um, a 275 gallon tote inside of our barn up there and we actually uh, cut the lid off of it cut the top off of it and we put it in there so one truckload of sawdust that we get for free at a local sawmill find a local sawmill and you should be able to get some for yourself and we fill that up and we use that and it lasts us for a little over a year and that's with using it in the chicken coops and using it for our composting toilet system so the one of the reasons why I also picked five and five you know five feet for this is I could get ten foot boards cut them down to five feet and not have any waste. Now, if you wanted to do um, a uh, four foot uh, enclosure, and you're gonna see how this all comes together in a minute, then you could also just get eight foot boards, and that's a little less expensive. So the longer the boards, the more it costs. So you don't wanna get, like if you don't wanna do five foot and get eight foot boards, then you'll have a lot of waste, right? You'll be wasting three feet off of every board that you won't be able to use. So you'll wanna just try to divide, use your math, divide up how the length of the board um, in relations to how big you wanna build each each one of these areas to do your composting so let's see I talked about how long it sets in there so you fill it up for a year and then you let it sit for an additional year and then if you're super paranoid about it you can let it sit an additional year and everything will be dead in there all the pathogens anything that's going on will be dead in there now if you're a heavily medicated person then you might not want to use this on your edible plants you might want to put this on your trees and your shrubs and you can still use it composting your manure is a superior way uh, to turn the, the byproduct of the human function into something that's beneficial for the environment. Sending your stuff down a toilet that flushes and uses thousands of gallons of water a year just to end up at a recycling plant, just to have it recycled and chemicalized and and everything there to be again brought back to your house is not an efficient way so a lot of municipalities are actually jumping on the composting bandwagon and they're making large facilities and they're doing the same kind of an idea where they're bringing in the waste in large numbers and then they're composting it there
how I'm showing you guys why I put these braces on. I'm putting in these boards so I have a removable back, okay? The reason why I want a removable back is because on the other system, I was always having to reach way down in there when the pile was really low, and you know, it causes uh, some issues. I mean, you don't wanna be lifting those buckets, they're heavy, and then you don't wanna be going up and in, so this is gonna make it a lot better. When I, I'll take all these boards off and put them to the side, and then as the pile grows, I'll add another board every time. So in the end, I will have a full compost bin, and then my boards will be holding everything in. And then when I want to shovel it out, all I have to do is pull these boards out. I'm a genius. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this build. Um, what we're going to do here is keep our straw underneath the roof. Uh, so we'll have it on hand when we need it. I'll put a pallet in there, get it up off the ground, and then I can keep uh, four or five bales of straw in there. So when we fill up our piles, we can put our straw on top and um, make sure that there's no smell or anything or no bugs or anything. So that's going to be super functional. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you guys how to open it up how to start a brand new um, pile, if you will, because we have some buckets that we have to clean out pretty soon. So I'm gonna show you guys how to start a new composting pile if you wanna pursue the human ore composting. Also, this roof is gonna collect water and we're gonna have a water catchment on the roof and then feed it into a receptacle, which you guys will see in a future video as well. So this is gonna be a pretty self-contained build. Um, everything I need to take care of our composting toilets is gonna to be right here at my fingertips and that is an improvement. Guys, today is the last day, tonight at midnight, Eastern Standard Time, that you can get your Off Grid with Doug and Stacy t-shirts to help us with the learning center build so if you're interested in doing that the link is down below in the descriptions and also i'll pin a comment to the top of the comment section so you guys could do that we wanted to try to sell about 100 shirts uh they extended the program for another week and we're hopefully uh going to get there we're more than halfway there so if all you guys just said right now hey we want to support off grid with doug and stacy uh we don't do patreon we don't do gofundme we don't do anything like that steam it or anything else we just put videos here for you guys free of charge so you guys can just watch our videos and learn how you can live the self-sufficient life so hopefully that means something to you guys and uh, there's a little value in there uh, when we do these kind of t-shirt things so don't forget to check us out on facebook instagram and twitter and we will see you tomorrow Thanks for watching our video. You might want to check out these videos. And if you want to become a homestead homie, click the picture of us below. We, we will, will see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow.